to Lifecycle 201. Today we're going to talk about email submit buttons. And so I have a form here set up, very simple with name, address, city, state, zip, and then I have this button email submit. And so I'm going to show you how I created this. I just drug it out of the object library and I made the size a little bigger, changed the font to 14, and then I aligned center and page horizontally. And then right here under the field tab, actually under the object tab and then the field sub tab, I put in an email address. And then I put in an email subject. Then I have some choices here. I have a choice to submit as a PDF or as XML data. I'm going to choose PDF. And then I have a signed submission and there's some settings here that I don't want to do. I don't want to sign the submission at all. And so what this is going to do then is when the user fills out information in this form and clicks this submit by email button, they will then, uh, whatever their default email client is on their computer, will open up and it will generate an attachment, a PDF attachment that will then be sent to whatever email address I've put right here with whatever subject matter I've put in right here. So let's test this out. Okay, and so I've put all this form data in here, and I'm going to click Submit by Email. When I do this, I have Outlook as my default email client. This email gets automatically created from my default email address which is of course my true tech troubleshooting to the address I put in the form field the subject there and then this attachment with a sample message right here then we can send the message and of course if you could see my email I've sent and receive on the other screen and I get this message in my inbox I can open up the attachment and here is the form filled out don't get confused because both of them look the same. This is the submitted one. This is the one that I used to submit. So if we wanted to customize how the message looks, for instance, the body of the email. Uh, right now it just has test email and the attack and this is just a default message that's put in by Lifecycle. If we want to change that and make that customized to how we want it, We'll have to do this in a different way. So I'm going to delete this button. Then I'm just going to drag a regular button. And I'm going to call it same text submit by email. But then down here under control type, I want to do a submit. And once I do, once I do that, this little warning comes up saying I need to provide a URL, return URL. And then this little extra tab here on the object tab comes up. And then we have a lot of choices. We have to submit as an XML data package, XML data file, HTT post, and PDF. So PDF is what we're, we've been doing. Let's keep with that. And then we can customize this by the script editor into the pre-submit event and put in a script such as this one. So I'll put my, first I put the mail to and my two tech troubleshooting email address, and then a question mark, and then subject will equal like that, and then data ampersand body equals this is the body text. And of course, anything beyond this equal sign will be what's in the body of the actual email. So for instance, all this right here. 
So we can put in something more than that. We can put in something like, let's put in hello world. And then this is the body of the text. So now if we save this and test it, there's our customized body text. So email submit buttons can be a powerful tool to help you collect data from your end user. You create a form, you want many people to respond, um, you can send them a form with an email submit button so that when they fill it out, then they click on the email submit button and it automatically comes back to you. And of course you can create all kinds of customizations and rules in order to make this button read only until such a time as, or make it invisible or hidden, until such a time as everything is filled out. So like we could put a script in here that says if name, address, city, state, zip equals null or any of them equal null, then don't show this. But if they all equal something, then make the command button visible and then they can click on it. Something like that. But that's more advanced scripting and we'll get to that in the Lifecycle 301 class. So I hope this helps and I hope you learn a lot. Like, submit, subscribe, and keep those questions coming via the blog, truetechtroubleshooting.com.